Be like water, my friend, is a famous quote by Bruce Lee, comparing a martial artist to a river that flows around the resistance of rocks instead of trying to break them. Combat Jiu Jitsu is a great format that showcases how Jiu Jitsu athletes can use strikes and the threat of submission to flow like water. What allows us to be more like water and less like Bugs Bunny is our ability to create consequences for our opponent. Guard retention is a foundational skill of Jiu Jitsu because there are consequences if someone passes your guard. In a tournament, they could very well get three points if they pass your guard. In combat Jiu Jitsu, they can hit you, and in sub only, the main consequence is submission. And because we don't want these things to happen, we want to retain our guard. So we'll do things like bring our knee and our elbow together to make it difficult for our opponent to pass our guard. However, that makes it very easy for them to sit back on a heel hook. Or if we just let them hang out in this perfect distance, they can just hit us in the face if it's combat jujitsu. So because we don't want either of those, we're going to hug them. And instead of having a very aggressive half guard, which would allow our opponent to sit back on a leg attack, we're going to have a relatively loose half guard to make sure our feet are safe. So the threat of leg lock gives us an easy ability to just slide our knee right across into the three quarter mount. And the threat of strikes gives us perfect head position when we're initiating our guard path. If you're passing someone's guard and they think to themselves, man, if I try and retain my guard, I'm going to get heel hooked. And if I turn away, I'm going to get choked. So it might be in my best interest to just let them pass and just hug them so I didn't get submitted and at least I'm not getting punched. But if there's no consequences, your opponent can just say, okay, pass my guard. Now what? Are you going to try and leg lock me? It's hard to leg lock me if I straighten my leg. Now that does make it very easy for you to mount me. But again, if there's no consequences and I don't feel threatened by you mounting me, it's going to be very hard for you to get the finish. Because the hardest person to submit is one that's in the fetal position. And consequences are what force people to abort the fetal position. And once they abort the fetal position, that's what allows us to be like water. And in combat jujitsu, consequences come in the form of strikes and strong submissional threats. And I think we can all agree there's nothing spectacular about this heel hook entry or this guard pass here, but they look so effortless because the top player is posing legitimate threats to the bottom player. Now, one thing I think a lot of people get caught up talking about is the idea of right and wrong techniques. I personally do this quite a bit. Like if Donaher didn't teach it or Gordon didn't teach it, I just kind of assume it's wrong. I think a good example that portrays the point I'm trying to get across is pulling guard because there's nothing wrong with pulling guard and a lot of people do it very successfully. It's only wrong if there are consequences, and those consequences are often determined by the rule set. So if you pull guard with 30 seconds left in ADCC, you're going to get penalized, and that penalty can result in you losing the match. So in that case, I think a lot of people would agree it was wrong to pull guard, and the reason it was wrong is because there were consequences. Look at this picture here. Is the bottom player doing anything wrong? No, they're just trying to retain their guard. It's not wrong unless the top player sits back into a heel hook. And John Donaher gives us a bit of an insight into this idea in his interview with Joe Rogan. So he's doing the right thing. He's, he's doing a good job here. Cyborg's not naive. He's, as you said before, he's a multi-time world champion. He's very, very good. He's not leg locking someone who doesn't understand what's going on. He knows what Gordon Ryan wants. On this YouTube channel, we're breaking down very high level matches. So people aren't going to be doing really stupid things. Looking at this half guard position here, I think a lot of people that are familiar with IBJJF rules and just fight like hell to not let their guard get passed, I think would say that the bottom player is not playing a very good half guard right now. But to someone who watches a lot of sub only competitions, to me, I don't think this half guard is wrong. I think of it as a way to play half guard if you don't want to get leg locked. And again, along those same lines, I think a lot of people watching a lot of sub only or IBJJF tournaments would say that hugging someone's head in this situation is wrong. And yes, it is wrong if you're trying to prevent them from passing your guard, because by hugging their head, you give them perfect head position. But in combat jujitsu, the rules are a bit different. And if you don't hug their head, then they have the ability to slap you. So the point I'm trying to make is that it's the consequences that determine our actions. So I'm not hugging your head because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm hugging your head because I'm afraid of the consequences that are going to happen if I don't hug your head. Like this outside elbow escape. Is it wrong to do something that's taught from pretty much day one of any jujitsu school? No, it's only wrong if the top player backsteps into your legs or if it's combat jujitsu and they try and hit you, especially if that person that's trying to hit you just knocks someone out cold in the previous round. 
a lot of people would say it's wrong to turn your back on your opponent. Now, in most cases, that's probably true. But what if you've been on top the whole match and you have a really cool rash guard you want people to see? So you're like, man, let me let this guy take my back so the fans can see the front of my rash guard. And if they're interested, they can use the discount code in the link below to purchase it. Or maybe you have an instructional coming out on how to escape the back, and showing some of the back escapes will probably help sales. And if your defense is good, there aren't any real consequences to someone taking your back. So again, it all comes down to consequences. At the highest levels, people aren't going to do anything wrong. They're going to do things because there's consequences if they don't. So when we're developing a training program for ourselves or our students, I think it's really important first and foremost to have a threat that your opponent respects. Now again, this is different depending on the rule set because in an IBJJF tournament, you can win by passing the guard. But in sub only, you're gonna have to be able to submit the person. And in Josh Waitzkin's book, The Art of Learning, he talks about how most people spent their time focusing on the beginning of the match and how to beat their opponent in three to four chess moves. Whereas he spent the majority of his training time in the end game, working with one or two pieces on the board. And he had faith that if he was able to get past his opponent's initial attack, he was going to have a good chance of winning that match. Donaher talks about this as well, where if you develop a really strong back attack sequence with someone and they're 90% confident that if they get to the back, they're going to finish the match and they find themselves in a situation where they're struggling and they really don't know what to do, knowing that they may be stuck right now, but if they get out and they're able to get to where they want to be, they're going to have a good chance of winning. So by giving people really good submissional threats, you give them hope. So I do think a good place to start is developing your attacks from the back. And we just finished a three-part series, so you can check that out in the description below. And usually the prerequisite to taking the back is the turtle position. And I don't think anyone's better than Gordon Ryan at attacking from turtle and the back. And I bet if you were to ask Gordon Ryan if he had someone in the turtle position, I think he would be over 90% confident that he's going to win that match. So if you have that skill set and you find yourself on top in this position here, your opponent's going to tell themselves, man, I cannot turtle right now. If I turtle, this match is going to be over. So I I need to make sure he cannot pass my guard. So I think the next step in our training development is to get a good leg attack game. So when they're trying to retain their guard, we can pose a legitimate leg lock threat to them. So now because there's consequences if they turn away, there's consequences if they retain their guard, now guard passing becomes a whole lot easier. And again, from side control, our opponent cannot turn away from us because if they do, we're 90% confident that we're going to finish the match. They're afraid to try and recover their guard because we're going to try and heel hook them when they do. So they'll try and turn into us, and they can't turn into us without straightening their bottom leg, which will allow for a very easy mount. So I think the next step in our progression is to develop really good mount attacks. And this is going to take a while, right? But once you develop so many consequences for your opponent, and again, those consequences are determined by the rule set, but the goal is to be so confident that you can say things like this. Okay, Gordon Ryan just won the battle. Essentially, at this point, the fight is over. <laughs> If we get to a relatively easy position to get to like this, and we can say, man, if I get here, I'm 75% confident. I'm 90% confident that I'm going to win this match because if they try and retain their guard, I'm going to break their leg. If they turn away from me, I'm going to choke them. And if they let me pass their guard, I'm going to mount them and submit them. And in combat jujitsu, you can't just do nothing or else I'm going to hit you. So as the bottom person, you just feel like there's consequences every direction you turn. And you just feel very hopeless and there's nothing that you can do to stop that river from flowing. Developing strong submissional threats is how we create consequences for our opponents and will ultimately allow us to be like water.